A vertical farm, in my view, is any indoor farming operation that exceeds a standard one-story building. So the biggest question is, well, why even talk about this? Why, why is this a topic today? And even in 2000, when I first started to think about this, the climate change people convinced me that there was something else going on besides normal climate change. So it was rapid climate change. And it doesn't mean rapid climate warming or rapid climate cooling. It just means that wherever you live, if you get the weather reports every day for 10 years, you're not going to believe the differences. And that shouldn't be happening, to be honest. That, that really is unprecedented in the Earth's history, except for catastrophic volcanoes and stuff like this. So we are the volcano. We are the meteor that hit the Earth, that altered life on Earth. So if we want to rectify that, we have to use our technology and our brains to work our way out of a problem that we created. Food and water are our biggest needs. And food comes from the land. Everybody knows that. But not anymore. It can't come from the land anymore because we've used it all up. Well, in Japan, they had several events that uh, altered their lives forever. And the first was the earthquake, followed by the tsunami, followed by the meltdown at Fukushima. All of those were related. And Sendai, the, the city nearest the Fukushima reactor, was inundated by the tsunami. Now, what did that mean? They lost 5% of their farmland in 20 minutes. It just disappeared. Now, 5% doesn't sound like a lot, but when you look at how many people live in Japan and how dependent upon that little land they are for their food, then it represented a, a catastrophe. So they began to ramp up an already existing set of a research uh, agenda, which uh, said, how do you grow food indoors? And how do you grow a lot of food indoors? In 2010, a building was erected in Tokyo, which is nine stories tall, which is an integrated building. And in, inside of that facility, you can go downstairs from work, grab a handful of rice, harvest it, bring it up, winnow it, bring it to the chef, and then go pick tomatoes on another floor, pick green beans, pick real leafy greens, hand it all to the chef, there's your raw materials, make me something interesting. And the next thing you know, 20 minutes later, you're sitting down and you're eating it. And so that food is like less than 20 minutes old. You have no idea of how that tastes. It's fantastic. It probably violated virtually every building code known to people throughout the world. How can you possibly put edible plants in the, per in the same place that you put people? That's crazy. Why are you doing this? And yet, it's the envy of the entire architectural world because it gives purpose to a building. It doesn't generate CO2, it doesn't take up space, it doesn't throw off heat. It actually creates oxygen. It feeds people. It draws them to work. So, take that one example, that's a small example. Now, create a city out of it. And it, you're only limited by your imagination as to what that city is gonna look like. It's the edible city. If you said, from now on, all of the new architecture has to include recycling gray water, Rainwater harvesting, no CO2 emissions. Why? Because we grow plants inside that trap that. And then some portion of the plants that you're growing have to be edible plants. If that's the building codes from now on, you've got yourself a technological equivalent of an ecosystem. Nothing better than that.